Hey there, welcome back to Resident Evil Revelations 2. We picked up a tourniquet. So in this game there are status effects, uh, such as bleeding and getting gunk on your screen, and tourniquets are one of the two items that do away with that. And man, we're just immediately going right into it, aren't we? The workbench allows you to uh, upgrade all of your weapons. This game uses a different upgrading system than uh, previous rev excuse me, previous Resident Evil games where you can only equip four weapons at once. So it allows you to swap out your weapon parts uh, as you will. And you can see there, I picked up a damage upgrade. And because I think the pistol wouldn't benefit so much from it, I put it on the shotgun. Moira, I'll give you a boost. See if you can climb up. Okay. But if I decide to take it off of the shotgun, uh, there will be no resistance, and the upgrades are not locked in. So that's good and appreciated. So this is another uh, little mechanic here. Boxes. Thank you, tutorial. It's ba it's basically a lock picking mini game. It's it's basically like a glorified lock picking mini game. I just want to say. I am awful at this. I'm really, really bad at these. So you will have to forgive me for fucking them up. Sometimes, you have to do these under time pressure. <laughs> like a lot of time pressure. But the rewards are almost always worth it. Like, uh, right there I picked up a handgun ammo case, which increases the maximum amount of handgun ammo I can carry. Claire! This way! Occasionally, you'll have to send Moira off on her own, and uh, she'll be pretty defenseless. But usually, after a little while, Claire finds a way to meet Maybe up with her. Outside, we can find someone to help us. Maybe. Oh, get out of here, Emblem. Metal. Whatever you are. <laughs> You're useless to me. I'm not gonna find all of them, so what's the point? <laughs> this half-assed completion. It's just, it's just not suitable for Let's Play. Oh, that's not good. I just want to get out of here. I agree. I agree with you, Moira. I, I would like to get out of this, this, this terrifying not area get ahead too. Of ourselves. Oh. Something kind of annoying about the NPC Moira is that if you manually turn off her flashlight, uh, she won't turn it back on. So you have to swap to her and then turn it back on. Man, the shotgun is useful. So you might have noticed that guy had a creepy glowing pus sack on his head. Don't know what that's about. I'm sure it's not important. This note is very, uh, it's very morbid. <laughs> I don't know which one of them can read Russian or speak Russian. I don't. Ah, oh, hey there. God damn. Probably shouldn't be wasting my shotgun ammo like this. But I'm gonna do it anyway. So the reason I'm giving my tourniquets to Moira is because the co-op partner, uh, well, rather, the, N the NPC, can use tourniquets to heal you uh, from a close distance. And it seems that the bracelets change color in response to fear, which means that the virus might be activated by fear, which is... A little bit silly, but it's a Resident Evil game, so I'll, I'll forgive it for being ridiculous. But yeah, tourniquets, herbs, and the, uh, the other screen-clearing item can be used by the co-op partner. And in actual co-op, players can heal each other by using herbs near each other. And of, and of course, more fucking Kafka. I don't... Man. This whole, this whole episode is a reference to the trial. And 
like, like they they make no bones about trying to hide that from the player. Oh, see, look, I'm really bad. I was close though. Like if you if you make the first comparison to one of Kafka's books in one of the episodes you will be able to pretty much instantly figure out what's going to happen in it. Sometimes, the boxes contain weapon parts, which are extremely useful, and it's it's kind of sad how bad I am at finding them. Like, man, I, like, after I finished recording the game, I went back and looked at how many I missed, and there are so damn many. Uh-oh. Time to be sneaky. If you watched the first raid mode video, you might remember this big guy. Well, <laughs> they're much tougher in the campaign. However, if you get the drop on them, you get a free shot off on them. And then, of course, uh, they smack you to the ground and, and you can't move. And hey, look, Moira used a tourniquet. Tourniquets fully heal you, so it's beneficial to use them only when you're bleeding. But, if you don't happen to have any herbs, as we won't for Claire and Moira a lot of the time, they, uh, they make a good last-ditch healing item. So the big guys, the, uh, steel cage heads. I don't remember what they're called. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to call them pyramid head. So the pyramid heads, uh, they're basically mini bosses in the campaign. In, in raid mode, they show up by the dozen, but in the campaign, they're all, they're, they're not all over the place. So darn it, we don't have a rusty key. And man, these, these things are just looking more and more ominous the further we go. I swear, it's this game is very good about making things look ominous and threatening. And oh look, it's a shortcut. And we picked up throwable items. Throwable items are they're a good they're a good way to knock enemies on their asses. They, there's one type of bottle and one type of enemy that like fit together extremely well. Uh, but the others are not useless, but they're only useful for, like, distracting enemies. But we will get more types of bottles later, so I'll explain those when we get to them. Oh, no. Of course there had to be bugs. So, people who have followed my Let's Plays might know that I am absolutely terrified of spiders. Uh, but the claw spiders are not that bad, surprisingly enough. They're like this, they go up to your ankle, sure, and they'll, they'll bite you. But they're really not all that bad. They go down in one shot from any weapon and one swing of your knife. So, comparatively, could definitely be worse. So yeah, this is just explaining what I said earlier about, you know, the players having to be separated sometimes. This message is, that message still shows up in co-op, even though it's not relevant. Uh-oh. Surely nothing will go wrong! What? Oh. Are you kidding me? Well, that wasn't as drastic as I thought it would be. So it's not often that you actually use Moira for combat in the campaign, but she can she can hold her own pretty well. Like regular enemies only take like three or four swings from the crowbar to go down. And there are some enemies that she can't blind with her crowbar. Or fuck. With her flashlight. <laughs> that she can't blind with her flashlight. But most of them she can. And oh man, that was a close one. Time to watch this spider get crushed. Hell yeah. He got what was coming to them. Sp spiders are just, they're monsters. 
They're horrible, horrible creatures that do not deserve to be alive. Every Resident Evil game. Are you okay? Yeah, I was almost a clear sandwich. <laughs> Does Barry tell everyone that story? <laughs> that should help. Fuck yeah, Barry. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Most people, in in most situations, a callback like that would be stupid. But in this game, I think they handled it pretty well by having it be like an in-world joke that the in-world character actually says to people. I think, I think they handled that pretty well as fan service. But anyway, yeah, spiders. They're monsters. Horrible, horrible monsters. I hate them so much. Not saying that there are any other kind of spiders in this game, or even hinting at it. I am definitely not doing that. But Resident Evil is a series known for its giant spiders, so... Might want to keep that in mind. So these guys, the, the afflicted, are... They're kind of like the default, like, not quite zombies in Resident Evil 5. They're fast, but they're not too extremely powerful. Like you can see there that I've got jelly on the edge of my screen now, but with a healing spray it's all gone. But they attack they move pretty quickly. They move and attack pretty quickly, which is their their main like their main difficulty in fighting them. So now, now that we've turned on the power, we can pick up this gear cog. I, I don't know why it's spelled with a K. I don't know. But first, let's uh, dump off this part here. Firing rate is interesting. Firing rate is an interesting upgrade because on semi-automatic weapons, it doesn't really do all that much. Like the handgun already fires pretty fast, but now, now we can fire it super fast. But it fires almost as fast as you click the mouse button anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. Ugh. Oh, sick. So they were torturing people. <laughs> like, did that really take you that long to figure that out, Claire? I mean, it's kind of been... It's been a couple of hours, at least, in the, in the game. Oh. I see you. What? What an idiot! <laughs> what? Come on! Oh no! I I am not I'm not doing so hot on ammo right now. You might have noticed, which is a running theme for Claire. Claire and Moira, their segments are like the hardest part of this game. They're just it's just so difficult. Uh oh. Oof. That had to suck. I, one thing I will say is that you don't need to babysit the co-op partner. That is one thing that I can definitely appreciate. Like, in single player, the co-op partner can take damage, but uh, they take like way reduced damage, which is good. Oh shit. Hey, remember that fire breathing bust? I've got good news. Time to put it to the test. As it turns out, fire is very effective against flesh. So now we have to defend our position while Moira does her thing with the crowbar. Kind of puts the co-op partner at a disadvantage here, but whatever. Much like in other Resident Evil games, throwing items that you throw will not hurt you, but uh, they will stumble you. So, you gotta be careful of that when you're throwing an item, because you might throw it too close to yourself, and then it'll smack you and then you won't be able to do your follow-up. Oh 
Shit, take your time, guys. Well, fuck that place very much. Where do you think we are? California. What a nice silence. Oh, crap. Said the poor lost soul as she lamented her fate. <laughs> Again with these stupid bracelets. Who are you? I want answers. I am the overseer. Fear requires an audience. And a conductor. Overseer? What do you want from us? Nice. Real nice. I'm just gonna say this right now. She said that the Vosik is where life begins, but, uh... Wait until the next episode when you see what the Vosik is, and then question that. Question what she just said. Oh my god, a radio tower. A radio tower. Maybe we can send an SOS. Claire, you're in a horror video game. You should know you should know better than to think you can send out an SOS. By the way, I think I mentioned it already, but this game is very pretty. Like the graphics in this game are amazing. Like really good. <laughs> again, again, the use of color is much appreciated in twenty fifteen where everything is brown and green. See? You can do it. I got you. Fuck you, Hollywood. That wasn't even close to easy. <laughs> Listen, Moira, I'm really sorry. I don't know what I got you mixed up in. Mary will never forgive me. This isn't your fault. Also, Barry can kiss my ass. The guy bitches and moans and granny swears about everything. What is a granny swear? I've always- I've wondered that since I p first played this game. Like, I don't know what a granny swear is- like, my grandmother does not have that bad of a mouth, Moira. I don't know. So there's a weapon part bench right there, which is my first indication that I missed a weapon part. Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. And, uh, I did. But don't worry, we'll see it again. We'll see it again. So? No, it's dead. You stay here. I'm gonna go check it out. and I were taken here against our will. I don't know where. <laughs> we have these fucked up bracelets and this crazy woman is talking to us. Some kind of monsters have killed the others. <laughs> Please, send help. Please. One more time. My name is Moira Burton. <laughs> oh, God. What is this place? So that's it. That's the end of, uh, chapter one. Part one of episode one. The Revengeance. So at the end of every episode, you get rated on your accuracy, the number of times you died, 
and how fast you got through it. And uh, you can see I did pretty well for, uh, for the first mission. Now, every mission has medals, which are basically like tiny little achievements that uh, give a bonus to the amount of skill points you get for spending. And you can see I didn't do very well on those, but they, they require sometimes playing as the co-op character uh, in normal situations. So you won't see me getting very many of those, but I'll try for some of them, just in the interest of changing things up. You can also say that I missed the vast majority of the collectibles, so really this screen just serves to embarrass me. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you next time, when we finally meet the best character in the entire game.